And you don't tell me my story. It may not get told. And I got so many stories that I can tell you. And I'm blessed to be 87 years old. Yeah. But I'm not going to do that. I said, oh, it'll take too long to do that. So I'm just going to tell you two stories that's dear to my heart. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his beautiful wife, Carol Scott King, parents had four beautiful children. <coughs> Your love to Denise, uh, who is deceased, Martin Luther King III, uh, Dexter Scott King, and uh, Bernice uh, King, who is the CEO of the King Center in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Well, Yolanda and I was born on the very same date, November 17, 1931, for me, and I just told y'all, I ain't years old. And Yolanda was born November 17, 1955. To, to have a niece born on my birthday. So I said to my husband, I said, I told everybody they had nicknames. I said, hey, I said, I have to go to uh, North Carolina and show your wish and love. I said, because I'm just excited to have a niece born on my birthday. So that's exactly what I did. I went to North Carolina, Alabama to show your parents some love. It was late one night about 10.30 or 11 o'clock, and I was seated in the living room of their home. And, uh, and I was sitting there, I was just thanking God, because I'm a praying person. I ask God for everything that I want. And if it's his will, he gives it to me. And if it's not his will, I don't get it. So I was just sitting there thanking him. And as I said, it was about 10.30 or 11 o'clock when he came in at night. And the living room was darkened, and the only light that shone through was the street light that shone through the curtains on the streets for all that. And now the parallel was attended to yoga. And as I was sitting there, and then uh, uh, came in. And when he came in, I was glad that uh, he couldn't see my face because I was just sitting there. And as he passed me, he went straight to his mantle. And I noticed that his shirt collar was open and he was doing this. And I said, Ooh, sideways to me like this, and uh, he continued to do this, and he said, I knew it must have been bothering me. He said, me? I said, yes, no. He said, do you know what happened to me? I said, no, tell me what happened to you. He said, I was detained at the police station, and then he said, they tried to show I said, what did you say? He said, you heard me. He said, they tried to tell me, talk me like that around me. And as he continued to tell, I began to cry because I said, well, this is a, this is a man, this is a man of wisdom. And as he continued to tell, the next thing he said to me, he floored me. He said, me. He said, no more that we are abused as the people, the more that we hate hunger and strife and hatred and evils and trials on the other hand. He said, me, he said, that's the more that we got to love them 
and forgive them. And as the man kept on talking, tears just kept streaming down in my face. And as he continued to talk, and I thought in my heart of hearts, I said that Martin Luther King Jr. because of his track heart, his track record all over the world, I knew and in my heart of hearts that Emel would become the man that he was to the world today in the story. And the other thing that I'm going to tell you uh, about, and I'm just going to blab on just a little bit. I don't even know when he was stabbed in New York City while autographing his book, his first book, uh, Strive to Freedom. Oh, well. When the news reached us naturally, I myself, I, could, I can't speak for nobody else. I was just speechless. I said, God, why in hell? What's wrong? What's going on with that? And the fact that uh, it was a black woman, I don't know where Corey, I think was her name, mm -hmm. a black woman was the fact to me that when she walked up to him as he sat there autographing his book and all, uh, and she simply asked, she said, are you Dr. King? And he said, yes. With that, that crazy woman pulled out a knife and stabbed him right in his chest, stabbed him right in his chest. As I said, I'm going to blab on just a little bit. When she stabbed him uh, in his chest, and in my world of travel, when I know one of my best lady came with Dr. Babs, and we were in, uh, I think it was Boston University, I was able to see that knife that that crazy woman plunged in his chest, it was about this long, and it was very, very thin, very, very thin. Uh, and as I sat there, stood there, looked at that knife, and as I thought of him out, as I knew him, I'm an only child. And it was like a brother to me. And as I stood there and as I looked at uh, that knife, very thin, and my flashlight shows me that if uh, ML had only sneezed, mm -hmm. that blade would have hit his heart. And he would, have been, he would have been gone. He would have been dead. But the good God that I love and I serve and I worship was not through with him yet. Amen. And it was not time for him to go. That's right. And he did not sneeze. <laughs> and he did not die. Yes, yes. And all I could think was, yes. thank you, God, you didn't take my trouble away from me by right now. But you can say, see this time. Well, I mean, 
The first one is nonviolence is a way of life. Nonviolence is a way of life for courageous people. For courageous people. The beloved community is the goal. You know, listen, you're not talking to me. I said, the beloved community is the goal. The beloved community is the goal. Attack forces of evil. Attack forces of evil. Not persons doing evil. Not persons doing evil. Accept suffering without retaliation. Accept suffering without retaliation. For the sake of a cause. Avoid violence by all means. Avoid violence by all means. And the last one is the universe is on the side of justice. The universe is on the side of justice. In closing, as a parent, the mother of five beautiful children. <laughs> Three have died and two yet lives. My prayer is that all parents will teach their children to love and forgive. What did I say? Love and forgive. To teach their children to love and forgive. And never, never hate. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says, and I gladly quote, that hate is too great a burden to bear. Thank you so much for listening. I love you.